I'm Irving, and I have no life, just like you. The Ballad of Irving. Irving. Big Fat Irving. Big Sport Irving. The 142nd fastest gun in the West. If you were listening closely, you heard me say that I was in the military for all of six weeks. And that's true. I spent three of those weeks in the hospital for various reasons and wound up having to accept a discharge for medical reasons. Maybe that's part of the reason I enjoy these games so much and why I like a really good one and why I really hate a bad one. I don't know how many of the guys I got to know during those six weeks died in Vietnam. I visited the Vietnam Memorial in Washington, D.C. a while back, but the sheer magnitude of that list of names was so overwhelming, all I could do was try to hold back tears. A good game, based on one of our country's battles for freedom, seems to me like a good tribute to the men, and yes, women, who gave everything they had in these conflicts. And a bad game seems to me like pissing on their graves. I guess that's why the overall low quality of this particular game is bugging me so much. So once that fades out, you're Canadian again. The Americans are mad at the Canadians because some of these places still haven't been taken when they were supposed to, and everybody's mad at the French because they're the ones who failed to take most of it. Reading between the lines, it's worse than that. The French actually reported that they had taken these places. Your Canadian persona and his buddies are heading off to remedy the situation. From what I heard, it was quite the ass chewing. No, 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 the Americans are rightly myth. We were supposed to take this river days ago. Command, you know, he's too conservative. Fortune favors the bold. Kind of hard to do with Jerry pinned our convoys down. That ends upon our arrival, Sergeant. It ends when we get up there. You have to clear out some mortar teams and Flak 88 guns, then a manor house with an 88 beside it. It's good Call of Duty action stuff. This is more like it. And now, I'm going to show you the shot of the century. And now, I'm going to show you a big problem. I'm sorry, but if you're going to set it up to where he can shoot at me and hit me, or hit my AI squad or whatever, you have got to make it so he's vulnerable to return fire. I ran into this several times, and the only way to take such a guy out was to move to a different angle where more of him was exposed. Oh, um, no! That is not how it works. If I can see him, I can hit him. That's called fair play. I have no idea what this is. Well, actually, I have a few choice words for it, but I've deliberately chosen to avoid those words in this show, so don't ask. In any case, be prepared for some unfair play where this is concerned, because it's going to happen a lot. At the end of this, you get an achievement for playing as a Canadian Highlander. I'm not really sure what that is, but hey, cool. I'll take it. Cut to the Polish armor guys again. We have new orders. We are taking Mount Ormel next. We? So just us? The Canadians are right behind. So just us? What is Mount Ormel anyway? The mace. Herr Kommandant, Sie zwingen uns zum Rundzug! Das Dorf ist verloren! Der Mond, Herr Kommandant! Kommandant! Wir alle! Das macht ihr! Jawohl! Macht ihr! Wir sollen das Dorf wieder nehmen! Hast ihr bereit für den Gegenangriff?
Anybody got any flares? Never figured I'd buy it from our own bombs. Yeah, they don't call it friendly fire for nothing. Ah, oh, crap! Nice timing. Let's move! Hey, what? What? But, but I thought we were going to be the Polish guys taking... But the Americans... And that sounded like French on the radio. I don't understand! We have random cut scenes going here, there, and nowhere. Still, it looks like we're American again, so off we go. We're taking the town, a fairly typical mission by this time in the war. There's not too much spectacular in this level. Lots of German foot soldiers. You get to grapple another time or two and that sort of thing. Although, this is pretty cool. Story progress is pretty basic until your new sergeant gets hit. Now you have to defend the building you're in against a massive German assault until a medic can get there and look after him. It's typical Call of Duty with non-stop action, enemies everywhere, and pretty much no time to think. As the assault is repelled, the medic checks on the sergeant and fixes him up. He wants the sergeant to go to a field hospital, but Sarge has other ideas. As the level ends, we see several of the game's threads starting to come together. All right, on me, form up. All right, good work. Dixon, battalion, on the radio. Dixon. Okay, I'll tell them. Yes, thank you, sir. I got some good news and bad news for you, boys. The Canadians have taken the Laison River. The Poles have moved into Vimotier to the north. Bottom line, Jerry's boxed in pretty good. We got him falling back towards Chambois. So what's the bad news? Chambois is where we're going next. Okay, that's established, so now we head back to the Maquis and the British. Your guy is still determined to get the Major out, the French are still convinced he's dead, but you're off to find him anyway. He's supposed to be held in a house nearby. How did they find that out? So you go to clear the house. The Major's not here. Keep moving. They might be keeping him in that cellar. So off you go to clear the cellar where you find him. The timing, Corporal. Let's get you out of here. For sure the boss heard that racket. Making a racket. Doyle, follow the Frenchie. The Frenchie's clearing the way. Come on. I'm not the only one Jerry's been holding. I'm a way ahead of you. We saved a bunch of Maquis from the firing squad on our way here. The Jerry interrogating me bragged about torturing three. Nothing about a firing squad. Major! Reunions can wait, Pierre. Three more of your men are getting tortured as we speak. Best if we split up. Good hunting. Doyle, take the wheel. Doyle, take the wheel. I'm learning to hate those words. 
One of the worst aspects of driving in these Maquis British levels is the map. Watch a little bit of this. trying to take me. Until you're right on top of the objective, it's impossible to tell. It's over there. Which road do I take? You can't tell because it only shows you a fraction of the area, so you have to guess. But if you're wrong, your pal isn't shy about telling you so. So you have to use the horrible controls and the even more horrible map to find your way to three different houses and rescue three Maquis. While tracking down the second one, I encountered this little problem. couldn't even melee. I wound up getting killed, of course, and when I respawned, I had my guns back. I'm not asking, unless I consume massive quantities of vodka first. So you finish rescuing these guys, then you have to face an assault. Sorry, Marcel. She was a brave lass. Survive. Brave as any of you, Maquis. I think I liked him better when he was insulting the French. But I can't blame him. That girl had balls of steel. Back to the Canadians. Your commander seems to have a real problem with his radio man. Sir! Word from command. The Poles have taken Hill 262, but they lost the radio operator. <laughs> we got bigger problems than that, Private. This adds to them, sir. Command wants us to send a radio operator to help the Poles. Well, then get going! Sir! What are you waiting for? Mount Ormel is at least a day's drive away. Oh, Baron, Baron, I'm doing a favor. One of our tank crew has gone missing. We're going off on a rescue. Oh, that's dangerous business. You wouldn't want any part of it. I'm not a coward, Lieutenant. My job is to protect our radio, our only link to command and- Now your job is to be the Paul's radio. Dismiss, Private. Okay, this guy is, pardon me, kind of a dick. In the town, you're now handling a Bren, a gun that I really don't like. Though it does pack a good punch. I like to use it for this first part, then as soon as I get to the next section, swap it for one of the German submachine guns. The main task is finding a tank squad that the Germans were holding. Or something like that. With all the noise, it's a little hard to tell. Anyway, getting to them involves going through the building and taking out some machine gun nests. Pretty straightforward, except that the building is a freaking maze, and once you find your way in, you almost can't find your way out. 
Next, we regroup in the tavern, where one of our guys is already manning an MG-42 while Germans pour onto the street in a never-ending stream, at least until you get where you're going. In the tavern, your commander gets a great idea. Gather up weapons and ammo! Take up positions! Someone cover that window! Sir! What is it? Well, we got what we came for, sir. The tank crew, I mean, and I was Spit wondering... Spit it out, Private! I'm on the clock I here. was wondering why we aren't bugging out here, sir. Because we are taking this town into I why. didn't... I, I thought we don't have the manpower, sir. Give those tankers guns, and we do! Look, the Polish are stranded up on Mount Ormel trying to hold onto that hill with both hands. They'll need reinforcements, reinforcements that'll have to move through this town to get there. Do you understand? <laughs> Okay, did I say this guy was kind of a dick? Make that a thoroughgoing dick. Your next task is to take out those mortars that starting hitting you. There are three crews out back, and as long as you can avoid fire from the squillion other Germans descending on the place, they're fairly easy to take out. From here, you're holding off an assault that includes guys leaping into the building. It gets pretty crazy. Then, suddenly, they're coming from the other side. At least over there, you have a nice MG-42 that you can use on. Here comes a tank. Time to go! Quick! Into this building! But the door's boarded up. Oh, whatever shall we do? Are you serious? Any sensible American soldier in this war would just shoot the boards off. It's a lot faster and doesn't require silly music. So anyway, on we go. Looks like they converted the basement to ammo storage. There's enough explosives down here to take them out from So, guess what you do now? <laughs> This time, something goes wrong. What's wrong? Fuse must be defective. Wait here. Sergeant, no, wait! If the fuse is defective, the chargers are defective, and we're all dead! Jonathan! Jesus. There's one in every crowd. Outside, your commander says this. All right. <clears throat> Someone get on the radio to command. Start moving armor through Ceylon Bay. Let's get some reinforcements to the Polish, eh? Uh, dude? How are you gonna let the Polish reinforcements know? You sent your radio man away, remember? This guy is not only a dick, he's a stupid one. That's usually a lethal combination. So it's on to the mace. We see the Canadian radio man meet up with the Polish tank squad. Here's your first job. That goes something like this. So Hunter, you go with Baron. Nicely Baron. Go with these Canucks. Okay, I admit that's a great line. So spotting goes like this. Now, if you're shooting flares out at them and the big guns are using those to do their targeting, what do you need the radio for? I don't get it. I also don't get how I'm supposed to find the tanks, who we're actually shooting at, do I target that half-track too or what? And the tanks are zipping along, so how do I land a flare on one? It's confusing, and at first you don't really get a prompt that tells you how to mark a target. 
hint. Right trigger. And the arty guys can only shoot one thing at a time, so if you pop a flare on two or three targets, they'll only shoot the last one. It's weird, and half the time things don't respond to the controls. On top of that, a zillion Germans are shooting at you, and about the time you bring up the binoculars, you get the prompt to find cover because you're taking too much damage. So you blow up a few tanks, then you're supposed to fall back up the hill. Where? Where's the path? This is a ridiculously linear game, which is to say there's only one route you can take to a designated spot, and one of my biggest gripes with this game is half the time I can't find it. Up the hill behind us! Where are all these crowds coming from? Which way did they go? Which way did they go? Exactly. Lo and behold, there's some steps over there. And since you're too big a pussy to climb that little rise, you have to go around that way, even though there's a solid wall of bullets between you and the steps. So you finally get up there and the boss tells you to spot for the artillery again. Stop all the pieces! My job's to call in artillery strikes! I'm not running away from it! You're running away from bullets! Uh, nothing's happening. No flares. Wait a minute, go back to that. Head to the A station and get out of here! Okay, my objective marker is pointing somewhere else. So I'm not supposed to spot right now? Running away from it! You're running away from bullets! No, I'm not running anywhere! I'm not afraid! Okay, I'm still not supposed to spot. Better check the objective. Okay, get to the manor. There's a manor? Oh, okay, it's at the top of the hill. Yeah, so we're making our stand at the manor, right? We need artillery! Bullets! Spot targets with Bahater! Ah! So when he says spot for artillery, does he mean it this time? Apparently so. Keep the tank from the base! Okay, so that's it, right? Get out of the green flare! What difference does it make? If the Canucks were to use green flares to signal their approach, so we would... It's not the Canadian! More? Well, at least you can see him coming out of the smoke and pick him off easily. Wait a minute, they're coming from two ways? Not fair! And they have a tank. Now what? I see a bazooka over there, but I can't get to it because there's one stupid little barrel in the way and my character is too lame to jump over it. So off you go, but you have Germans shooting you from two different directions while you're trying to get to it. But eventually, you do. Move up to that fucker! It's 
accidentally. See that little twist of barbed wire there? Make sure you're past it or your shot will hit it instead of the damn tank. It doesn't matter where your sight's pointing, you'll hit any little thing that's between you and the tank. You know, in older games like the original Halo, where programmers and designers were still figuring out some stuff like that, I could forgive that. This is friggin' 2006. We're supposed to be past that kind of crap. So once you take the tank out, it's a matter of holding off the German soldiers until this. So you get an achievement for being a Polish tanker in the war. Whoopee. That was just bizarre. It took me several tries to get the stupid bazooka because things were hitting me from so many different directions, and each little nudge throws the visual off, turns my camera, and otherwise tries to make me puke from vertigo. I hate games that don't give me a chance to respond, and I hate games that don't respond properly to the controls. This level does both. Again, I expect a lot better from a Call of Duty game. Anyway, the Poles and Canadians have taken this key hill. Now the Germans are falling back. That's good, right? Get a 30 on that position there. Huxley, find some more sandbags. From Major Holden. The Poles and Canucks have taken Hill 262. Jerry's fallen back. Hard. Towards us? Every last godforsaken one of them. We're gonna need more ammo. Last level, here we come. This level starts right in. The shooting actually begins before the picture fades in and you can see what's happening. I need a clip! On the right! My Concentrate your fire! Where's the damn artillery? And if you get killed after the first checkpoint, which you will unless you're playing some super easy version, the same thing happens. I don't get it. By the time you get here, not only can you not see anything, you can't figure out what's happening. Check this out. There's a 30 cal in that house! He keeps screaming for somebody to get on the 30 cal, but apparently not the one on the sandbags. He says the one in that house. Which house? There's houses all over the damn place. As you saw, I finally found one and got on the 30 cal. The Germans cut me to ribbons. What's going on here? Every other time in this stupid game, when somebody says something like that, it's a cue for you to go do it. Not this time. Just how the hell am I supposed to know that? You keep falling back through paths that are almost impossible to figure out because your pointer moves like it's had one too many shots of vodka. You know, that sounds like a really good idea right now. 
Um, oh, sorry. Then you get word that another group needs your help on the other side of town. Off you go. Well, this is trouble. Isn't it fortunate that there's a nice scoped Springfield right there so you can take out the machine gun while Guzzo goes out to mark artillery targets? At this point, some things get more than a little weird. During one playthrough, I actually took out the German on the machine gun with my M1 Garand before I even discovered the Springfield. But Dixon was still screaming at me to take out the machine gun, even though the machine gun wasn't doing anything. So Guzzo runs out to Mark, and you're supposed to cover him by taking out the machine gun, and once again, I'd already done that, then Guzzo gets hit. Sergeant Dixon runs out to help him and wants you to go along to cover them. How? I'm not sure. Just as soon as you get back to cover, Dixon gets hit. Where the hell's that damn medic? The medic's dead! Oh, damn it! Dix! McCullen. McCullen. I forget him, Dix. McCullen told me to tell you. You are not dying should, like him. He told me to tell you. You should go to hell. Stay with me, But Dix. you're okay, Guzzo. Dix. You're okay. Come on, buddy. God damn it! So guess who that leaves in charge? Our old pal Guzzo, that's who. So you run to yet another side of town, and this is where the final battle takes place. Okay. Did you see those scoped rifles? Your next task is to use one and take out three mortar teams, preferably without any of those 10,000 Germans killing you. As quick as you do, you get blown up by some kind of shell. When your vision clears, you need to take out the German armored cars. The what? Oh, those! I got confused the first half dozen times I tried to do this, because at the same time, there's tanks and half-tracks and other vehicles heading across your field of view and disappearing off the left side of the screen. Why are these two so special? I have no idea, and I don't care. I did find out, though, that it has to be done a certain way. Did you see that really big gun in front of you? You have to use it to take out the first car, even though there's something like four bazookas sitting around doing nothing. Why? You'll find out. We gotta do it! German tank! Did you catch what came on the screen there at the end? Destroy the Tiger tanks. That's where the rest of your bazooka rounds come in because two of those tanks is going to take them all. So you take out the two tanks, and then it's just a matter of holding off the Germans. Now for the really silly part. The first time I got this far, the game actually considered me done and gave me an Xbox 360 achievement called Won the War. As quick as that achievement popped up on the screen, believe it or not, I died. I had to go back to that house and do the whole thing over again. After I got the achievement saying I was done. Who does something like that? If there's a finer example of sloppy programming, I don't know what it is. It took me three more tries to actually get to the end. The end, of course, is nothing but a short documentary about the end of this particular battle and the liberation of Paris. 
It's a little strange because instead of using old newsreel footage like most games do, this one has animated visuals. I don't know why and I don't care. This game is an abomination. Cheesy animation at the end just puts a funny hat on it. As I've said several times, I expect a lot more from a game in the outstanding, trend-setting Call of Duty series. I don't know how this mess ever got out of the developers' computers, but it should not have happened. It's buggy, poorly done, the AI are incredibly stupid, and it's a massive step backward in the quality of the series. Since Call of Duty, unlike Brothers in Arms, doesn't have an overarching story that ties the various volumes together, you can skip this one and not miss anything. And I strongly recommend you do just that. Fortunately for us World War II game lovers, somebody realized they had a huge turkey here and started on another one. The next installment was just called Call of Duty World at War. One of my big gripes with this series, and most others, is they basically ignore the war in the Pacific. There is lots of action revolving around kicking the Nazis out of Europe, but practically nothing about America's war with Japan, which is what brought the U.S. into the whole business in the first place. World at War remedies that and has some action on the other side of the world, as well as lots of cool stuff in Europe. Next time we look at Call of Duty, we'll examine that one. Now, if you'll excuse me, I have some forgetting to do. I'm Irving, and I have no life, just like you. Well, finally, Irving got three slugs in the belly. It was right outside the Frontier Deli. <laughs> he was sitting there twirling his gun around, and Butterfingers Irving gunned himself down. <laughs> Irving. Big fat Irving. Big dum dum Irving. Big dum dum dead Irving. The 142nd fastest gun in the West.